November 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Daniel chapter 8 from the Old Testament. In the third year of King Belshazzar's reign, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after the one that had appeared to me previously. In this vision I saw myself in Susa, the citadel, which is located in the province of Elam. In the vision I saw myself at the Ulai Canal. I looked up and saw a ram with two horns standing at the canal. Its two horns were both long, but one was longer than the other. The longer one was coming up after the shorter one. I saw that the ram was budding westward, northward, and southward. No animal was able to stand before it, and there was none who could deliver from its power. It did as it pleased and acted arrogantly. While I was contemplating all this, a male goat was coming from the west over the surface of all the land without touching the ground. This goat had a conspicuous horn between its eyes. It came to the two-horned ram that I had seen standing beside the canal and rushed against it with raging strength. I saw it approaching the ram. It went into a fit of rage against the ram and struck it and broke off its two horns. The ram had no ability to resist it. The goat hurled the ram to the ground and trampled it. No one could deliver the ram from its power. The male goat acted even more arrogantly, but no sooner had the large horn become strong than it was broken. And there arose four conspicuous horns in its place extending toward the four winds of the sky. From one of them came a small horn, but it grew to be very big toward the south and the east and toward the beautiful land. It grew so big it reached the army of heaven, and it brought about the fall of some of the army and some of the stars to the ground, where it trampled them. It acted arrogantly against the prince of the army, from whom the daily sacrifice was removed and whose sanctuary was thrown down. The army was given over along with the daily sacrifice in the course of his sinful rebellion. It hurled truth to the ground and enjoyed success. Then I heard a holy one speaking. Another holy one said to the one who was speaking, To what period of time does the vision pertain? This vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the destructive act of rebellion and the giving over of both the sanctuary and army to be trampled. He said to me, To 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be put right again. While I, Daniel, was watching the vision, I sought to understand it. Now one who appeared to be a man was standing before me. Then I heard a human voice coming from between the banks of the Uli. It called out, Gabriel, enable this person to understand the vision. So he approached the place where I was standing. As he came, I felt terrified and fell flat on the ground. Then he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the vision pertains to the time of the end. As he spoke with me, I fell into a trance with my face to the ground, but he touched me and stood me upright. Then he said, I am going to inform you about what will happen in the latter time of wrath, for the vision pertains to the appointed time of the end. The ram that you saw with the two horns stands for the kings of Media and Persia. The male goat is the king of Greece, and the large horn between its eyes is the first king. The horn that was broken in whose place there arose four others stands for four kingdoms that will arise from his nation, though they will not have his strength. Toward the end of their rule, when rebellious acts are complete, a rash and deceitful king will arise. His power will be great, but it will not be by his strength alone. He will cause terrible destruction. He will be successful in what he undertakes. He will destroy powerful people and the people of the Holy Ones. By his treachery, he will succeed through deceit. He will have an arrogant attitude and he will destroy many who are unaware of his schemes. He will rise up against the Prince of Princes, yet he will be broken apart, but not by human agency. The vision of the evenings and mornings that was told to you is correct, but you should seal up the vision for it refers to a time many days from now. I, Daniel, was exhausted and sick for days. Then I got up and again carried out the king's business, but I was astonished at the vision, and there was no one to explain it.
God, we know that this part of Daniel is probably almost likely talking a, a lot about Alexander the Great, who we know uh, took over so many territories, uh, was very much a conquering king. And then we know that his kingdom, once he died, uh, was split into four parts. Uh, originally, it was actually his two sons that were supposed to take over, but his four generals split his kingdoms up into four parts. And out of this, just like it talks about in Daniel's prophecy, uh, we see someone evil, Little Horn. We see an evil person show up, Antichus the Fourth of Epiphanes, uh, and he ruled the Seleucid Empire, uh, one of the four uh, areas, and he was pure evil. He actually wanted everybody to follow Greek practices, Greek religious practices, Greek uh, value systems. He wanted everything to be Greek. He actually sacrificed a pig in the temple. Can you imagine being Jewish back then and having that done? Um, and he put an object that was uh, about Zeus in the Holy of Holies, the place that no human being except for the, the priest was allowed to be he actually put something to another god in the holy of holies he burned scripture uh, he was just a an incredible evil person throughout this uh, daniel's not quite sure about all the details of his prophecy he's told a little bit about it having to do with dates and a little bit of the pieces of it but he was so overwhelmed with this prophecy of realizing the persecution that's going to be coming for his people that he was physically affected by it and for me personally if we hold on to anything with these prophecies instead of arguing about them if we hold on to anything of these prophecies it should be that same feeling that Daniel has of that acknowledgement that we know that the people of this world your children God are going to be persecuted and they're going to be persecuted in more violent and horrid ways as we get closer and closer to the end of times and we have to be intentionally aware that these things are going to happen, not because we can stop them, but because we can help our fellow Christians right now. We can support them. Sometimes this simply means a post on Facebook, just telling them you're thinking about them. Maybe this means, uh, my I just got this beautiful letter from my sister just encouraging me with daily video Bible that we're almost to the end of recording for the first year for the Bible. and. It, it was just a letter that I've read a lot of times and it gave me a lot of strength and energy to move forward. And it was just so godly of her to do something like that. When we're under attack, when we're being persecuted, the thing that closes that up the quickest, at least it does for me, is that support from other Christian people in my community. Um, Sometimes it's, for me, it's just a phone call, just hearing a voice that believes in me, supports me, encourages me, loves me uh, without question. And it truly can be as simple as that. T having people come up and tell me that they're praying for me and what they're praying for uh, just helps immensely with things like that. So we do know that persecution will continue. We do know that all Christians will experience this and we do know it's going to get worse. Um, and just like Daniel did, even though he was exhausted and sick for days, he didn't hide away. In fact, the next sentence says, I got up and again carried out the king's business. So he went back to work in this world. Uh, we're not called to hide out in this world. We're called to be not of this world. Uh, completely different things. So that we can be in this world glorifying you, God. But we need to keep in mind that our fellow brothers and sisters, even if we're not being vocal about it, <laughs> that they're being persecuted and they need our support and encouragement and prayers uh, very much if they're to continue to do your work here on this earth, God. Thank you for these powerful words in Daniel. Uh, one of my favorite sections in all the Bible, not only because of the stories that are so well known by the people of this world about Daniel, but the incredible abilities that you gave him to know of the future things and then more importantly, give him discernment as to what to do with them. In your son's name I pray, amen.